Now that we are done with binary conversions, we can now move on to the next topic for our engineering course. We are going to look at Boolean variables. So for this topic, I'm going to explain how Boolean variables work, and I'm going to introduce you to the AND, OR, NOT, XOR, and equivalent gates. So the first thing you have to know about Boolean variables is pretty simple. They are represented by a single letter, which can be any letter from A to Z, such as this letter A right here. It can represent one of two meanings, the number 0 or the number 1, or in the world of computer science, true or false, or in engineering, high or low. These are what you call Boolean variables. Several of these variables can be brought together to figure out the input or an output or of a wire which could lead to or be part of a larger component. The equation you see before you is the simplest equation you can write in Boolean, a equals x. You can use any two variables, not just these two, to represent the equation. Whenever a is equal to 0, x is equal to 0, and whenever a is equal to 1, x is equal to 1. Whatever goes in comes back out, shown in this diagram here. However, if we need to manipulate many inputs to an output, or an input to many outputs, or many inputs to many outputs, we use logic gates. Logic gates takes two or more Boolean variables and gives a Boolean output. The only exception will be the NOT gate, which only needs one Boolean variable, but we'll get to that later. The simplest and most popular way to show how logic gates work are through truth tables or Venn diagrams, and we're going to use truth tables in this lesson. Logic gates include the AND, OR, NOT, XOR equivalent, and their inverses. So let's take a look at some of these logic gates right now. Let's take a look at this first one here, which is the AND gate, and the AND gate looks like this. We have two inputs here, and we have one output on the curved end. As you can see, if both inputs are 1, the output is 1, otherwise the output is 0, according to this truth table here, thus it's called A and B. A good example to describe an AND gate would be something like this. Result X, I will get to work on time if A, I get up an hour before work, and B, my car is working properly. If both of these things are working, then yes, I will get to work on time. If one of them do not happen, then I will not get to work on time. Simple enough, right? The second logic gate to look at is an OR gate. With an OR gate, if only one input is 1, then the entire output is 1. Otherwise, the output is 0. Here's an example of a truth table, like so. A good example for something like this would be saying in a sentence that result x, I will have food on my plate if a, I choose a steak to eat, or b, I choose the chicken to eat. Regardless of what I choose, I will have food on my plate to eat. The equation for an OR gate is typically written as a plus b. So you know how it works for two inputs, but what about AND and OR gates with more than two inputs? Well, with AND gates, all inputs must remain a 1 for the output to be a 1. And with OR gates, only one input has to be a 1 for the output to be a 1. Now let's take a look at the NOT gate. The NOT gate only has one input, and it's very simple. We just invert the input. So 0 equals 1 and 1 becomes 0. The equation for a NOT gate is written in one of two ways, either the equation A with an apostrophe, or we just put a bar over it, like so. Next we have the exclusive OR gate, or the XOR gate. With this XOR gate, it is drawn just like an OR gate, with a line in the inputs, like so. For the output to be 1, only one of the inputs, not both, must be 1. So like for example, you can see in this truth table here that 1 XOR 1 make 0. An equation for this would involve putting a plus with a circle over it. So basically just like an OR gate, but with a circle over it to show that it's an exclusive OR gate. Now I'm going to show you a little trick about exclusive OR gates. 
and this involves using multiple inputs. Let's take, for example, this, 1 XOR 0 XOR 1. Well, this one is pretty easy because you just have to read left to right. 1 XOR 0, just take the truth table, you find that that is 1, and then 1 XOR 1 is 0. Now, how about this equation? Give up? Well, the answer is 1. Do you know why? I'm going to give you a hint here. Let's take a look at the truth table. I'm focusing on the inputs where a and b are equal to 0 and a and b are equal to 1. What I notice is, is that there are an even number of 1s, in this case 0 and 2, that create an output of 0. Meanwhile, those that create an output of 1 give me an odd number of 1s. In this case, only one input. In the equation 1 XOR 0 XOR 1, the answer was 0 because we had two 1s, an even number of 1s. So that is our answer. The handy XOR tip is that the number of 1s in the input determine the output. If there's an odd number of 1s, the output is 1, and if there's an even number of 1s, the output is 0. So now, next time, you know what to do when you see an equation like this. Yeah, it's not really very hard now, is it? Just count the number of 1s and you have your answer. Finally, we are going to take a look at the equivalence gate. Now, the equivalence gate is a little different from all the other gates because I couldn't exactly find an actual diagram for it. Most textbooks just use a box, so I'm going to go ahead and just use a box right here with an equivalent sign around it. For the output to be 1, both inputs must be equal to each other, otherwise it is 0. Basically, it is the exact opposite of an XOR gate, like seen in the truth table. The equation is written with the equivalence sign on it, thus why it is normally called an equivalence gate. Another name for it, though, is also known as the comparator. The equivalence gate is the simplest version of a comparator, which compares two numbers together. In this case, it just compares two bits together to determine if they are equal or not. Well, that's a wrap. Next, we're going to take a look at Boolean algebra, and I'm probably going to go ahead and take a look at the inversions of AND and OR and show you those gates since you already know the inversion of the XOR gate is the equivalence gate, as I have mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and explore that in the next video. Please thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching and see you next time.